What's going on, Tar Hill Nation? It's your favorite North Carolinian, Russ the Tar Hill. And welcome to the week four episode of Russ's Rant and the Tar Hill Mobile. Now, I'm not going to go to drive for a drive today, guys, because quite frankly, your boy is exhausted. All right. But I am in the Tar Hill Mobile, and therefore, it technically still is Russ's Rant in the Tar Hill Mobile. Now, if you don't know already, this is just the kind of weekly midweek session where I kind of rant, if you will, about just random topics pertaining to the North Carolina football and basketball program. We're about to get into basketball season. Um, I still am not sure if I would incorporate any of that into this. I'm trying to kind of keep football and basketball separated, um, but uh, we'll see what happens when the time comes. But for all intents and purposes, if you didn't know already, this is Russ's rant. Now, I started this segment because, you know, as a two and a half long decade UNC football fan, you know, I figured that there would be a ton of stuff to rant about. Usually there is. <laughs> Usually there are just tons of things that you just want to like. You know, when it comes to the football program, you just want to look in a mirror or you just want to get a captive audience and you just want to stay and go off on all the things that need to be fixed, all the things that you can't stand seeing year in, year out. I'm not going to lie, man. Thus far, knock on some wood, wherever that is. There's no wood in here. There's some stuff that looks like wood. Knock on some wood. Um... I haven't found a lot of things to to rant about. One of the things, though, that I do want to talk about today is I want to talk about the importance of bringing your own energy. Okay, and this is uh, this is something that's important on the football field, but it's important in life in general. Anything that you do when you talk to people that are successful, um, you know, they have an ability to motivate themselves. You know, they don't they don't depend. You know, a lot of times the most successful people, they don't depend on outside motivation to get things done. Now, I go through, you know, hills and valleys with this myself. You know, for instance, sometimes I'm in the gym hard and the only person that I need to motivate me is me. Other times I need one of my buddies that's in the gym hard and he sees me kind of dipping off, which I have been, I'm not going to lie. And uh, he's like, hey, bro, you need to get back in there, man. You get soft. And I'm like, oh, man, you know, you're right. You know, that accountability. But if I didn't have him, you know, the easy thing is, is the him or her. The easy thing is, is to continue down that decline because there's nobody watching you. There's nobody holding you accountable. There's nobody helping you stay motivated. But the most successful people in the world are able to self-motivate, you know. And you could say the same thing about a football team. Is every single football game, all 100 kids on that roster, let's just say a home roster, right? They don't travel with 100, but, you know, we'll say hypothetically 85 kids. Is every one of them going to bring their A game every single day? You don't know that. And it's highly unlikely because we're talking about young men. You know, these kids are going through school. They got girlfriends. You know, they got family issues. They're away from home, you know, et cetera, et cetera. They got all these kind of things that are going on. And one of the easy things is, is when people are excited about what you're doing, you can feed off of that, you know. You look at the South Carolina game, basically sold out. Tons of South Carolina fans. Stinking Bank of America was rocking, right? Easy to get excited about that football game. And I'm glad that the Hills came out and punched first. You know, that was great to see, and it showed a step of maturity. You come to the App State game, where it seemed like we were a little bit off. Maybe not as much hype. Maybe not as much focus. Maybe not. Maybe it was just that App State had a stinking fantastic game plan that kept them in that game. I don't know. But there was tons of fans there. Sold out. Lots of App State fans. 
for all intents and purposes, it's easy to get up for that football game. And I'm glad that the Heels went through that adversity and they came out on top. It shows another layer or a level of growth in, you know, the heel season. Then you go to Minnesota. Last minute sellout. Minnesota brings a ton of fans. People are saying, can they beat an SEC team? And can they beat a Big Ten team? People are saying, are we going to see that team that we saw against App State against the Big Ten? Because that team is not going to win. And then you have Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreet pick Minnesota to beat North Carolina. It's because they're relying on that past history of North Carolina. This is kind of the area, you know, 2-0, and 3-0, and where they expose themselves, if you will. That's what they'll say. You know, they showed us that they were pretenders. They're not contenders. And so they picked Minnesota. And North Carolina, although they weren't as sharp as I would have liked to have seen them, at the end of the day, they won by 18 points. Fairly comfortably, even though that game was kind of tighter, if you will, um, in the uh, later stages of the third quarter and into the fourth. Excuse me. So, it's easy to get excited about that game. It's a Big Ten opponent. Now, on one aspect, you have opening ACC play. You know, you say, well, how can you not get excited for that? Well, we're going from three sellouts for all intents and purposes to playing in front of a half-empty NFL stadium where, you know, it's not going to be loud. Those last three football games, there were times when the crowds were rocking. At Pitt, when they're one and two, they've only averaged 13 and a half points per game in the last two games. I don't think we'll see 30,000 people there. No, I may be wrong. I may be wrong. But uh, I would be very surprised. Not, yeah, definitely not 40. Definitely not 40. I'd be surprised if that place was half full. So, the question becomes, can North Carolina, in front of a you know, COVID crowd, if you will, you know, there's nobody there. All these empty seats everywhere. That's, that's basically what I'm referring to. There's not a lot of crowd noise. There's not a lot of hype, you know. The team that you're playing is struggling. You kind of already think, now we're going to walk over these guys. Their quarterback is not playing well. Can that team generate their own motivation? Not from the crowd, not from anyone, just from each other. Can they generate their own motivation and come out there and play the same way that they played all three weeks. I think that's an interesting, understated aspect of this football game. The natural inclination is to say there is no reason that North Carolina shouldn't blow these guys out. And I would say on paper, you are absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I think right now the line went down to seven and a half. Last time I saw that was like this morning. But what should they do to this team? They're much better. They should blow them out. But then you always have pits at home, lackluster crowd, North Carolina, this is their first away game, and it's also North Carolina's first game where it's just not, it's not a hostile environment. It's not even a loud environment. It's just an environment. I think that kind of worries me a little bit, you know, because the last thing I want is to be lulled to sleep by this team and for them to be... The stumbling block going into the bye week that kind of wrecks our hopes and dreams about what could happen this year. Now, I do believe that Mac has made tremendous strides in getting these kids focused, especially the defense. Especially the defense. Focused on the task at hand. Excuse me, once again. I apologize, guys. Long day. That is one of the interesting aspects that I'm looking at. And I think that if they show that, if they go into pit and handle business, man, and we're talking about four completely different ball games. 
And I would say that at that point, you kind of have to go into almost every other game on our schedule confident that the North Carolina Tar Heels, you know, in some way, shape, or form, they're going to be competitive. That there won't be a letdown. And by a letdown, I'm saying they're going to play like crap. No energy, you know, or just be completely, you know, just outplayed. I think that you're going to learn a lot about this team in this game. And it's because, you know, they're going to have to manufacture their own hype, their own motivation. So that's one of the things that I'm looking for, for to, to looking at is, because I think it would show that Mac Brown really does. He's he's gained control of this thing. He's, he's, he's garnered the, he's got the, the, the bull by the horns, you know, he's controlling this thing, finally. And I say finally with all due respect, you know, that we're not having these just mental lapses and, 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 and full game letdowns because that's obviously disappointing. And unfortunately, as Tar Heel fans, we've, we've dealt with our fair share of those things. You know, so if they can get it done and we can move the 4-0 for the first time the 19, since 1997 and get into that bye week, man, Good night. You got to be feeling good about this football team. Now, you know, I do believe that what we're seeing is what I predicted from the beginning is, and, it, and my prediction was largely based off of, you know, the talent that was on this team. And like I said, I was willing to put my 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 chips on Mac Brown. Given the circumstances, I, I figured that he was going to make the necessary adjustments because he understood the the precedent or, or the uh, what's the word I'm looking for the uh, the the expectation you know was 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 greater and I think that he's felt the importance of delivering that to the North Carolina faithful and uh, so far man I think he's done a good job now there's you know people that are going back and forth of the offense is not as explosive you know. But at the same time, hey, if you said, do you want to score 45 points a game or do you want to play complimentary football, protect the defense, and do you want to win 31-17 every game? Hey, give me 31-17, bro. Give me 31-17 and stacking them Ws all day long. That's all we want to do, man. We want to win. Now, I do. I want to win comfortably. You know, I, I do want to win by... 21, 28, you know, 18 against a Big Ten, you know, middle of the pack team. <clears throat> you know, I do because that is just another layer of growth when you start to cover. You start to cover, you know, you start to exceed what people expect of you. That's when you're going from good to great. And I, I think that's an interesting aspect of what we all need to be looking to, to see here on Saturday. Will the Hills come out ready to punch? You know, or is it going to be like, you know, Apollo Creed coming out in Rocky 1, you know, where he's playing around, and then Rocky ends up stinking. Rocky is a heavy underdog. Rocky's the heavy underdog in, 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 uh, in Rocky 1. Heavy underdog. And Apollo's playing around with him, and he's playing around with him, and he just won't go down. And then, he, then you get to the later sta sta stages of the uh, the fight, and my man is he's going toe to toe with you, and he's beating you up, you know. And then you got to worry about this thing going to the cards. I don't want that, you know. And that's what I'm talking about, you know. Not going 12 rounds. Let's let's go ahead and get the TKO and five six take their soul you know and let's come out there fired up man i want to see them flying around even when nobody's excited about it except me you know the guy on the other side of the tv you know and all other 100,000 fans that are watching whatever a million fans that are watching across the country you know can you generate your own energy when you come out swinging. That's what I want to see from this team. And like I said, if you see that this week, man, I think we're in a good spot, boys. I really do. 
boys and girls, I think we're in a good spot, man. That is going to be the key. Manufacturing your own energy. Because, you know, sometimes there's not going to be that guy that is going to sneak in, you know, pat you on the butt and say, let's go. It's not going to be that crowd that's getting loud on third down. You know, it's going to be you and your boys. That's it. You got to feed off of each other. Generate your own energy. Now, I've gone on long enough about that. I'm sure you guys are already sick of hearing about it. But I think that's one of the interesting aspects that we need to be looking at this week. And it'll tell us a lot about this football team. I also want to see them continue to uh, be heavy on the run, man. He had a good game plan last week. I think Minnesota did move the football more than I wanted them to. Um, you know, more than I think that their talent level is. But the Hills did, uh, they bent, they just didn't break. And so, you know, if you want to give up 600 yards of offense every week, and you keep that point total in the teens, bro, we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right, man, and keep giving up 13, 14, 17 points a game. We will be all right, boys, I'm telling you. So I want to see the defense play again, too, play play well again, because that's what good teams do, man. It's not a good offense. And they are relatively one-dimensional. So what do you do? You stop what they're good at, and you you make them attempt to be good at what they're not good at. You know, And that's how you, uh, you keep these scores low. So hopefully Gene Chizik won't abandon kind of the uh, the principles that he, he had set again uh, against Minnesota because I think for all intents and purposes it's going to be a very similar football game. You know they're going to want to run the football. They're going to want to be physical. Pitt probably has a couple of better athletes, um, but you know they got a, a serviceable good defense and. Uh, you know, that's what we should do. Stop the run, bro. Stop the run. Stop the run. And take what the defense gives you. You know, they want to play a 3-3-5 and have everybody back so they can take away Drake. Run the damn ball. They want to stack the box and put 7-8, you know, up on the line of scrimmage. Hey, let my boys think and sling it around. That's what he did against Minnesota, and it worked like a charm. You know, one for those two picks. And, uh, you know, like I said, we're looking at, at on the worst case scenario, 37 to 13, maybe 45 to 13. You know, and then we're, and we're talking about a, a huge victory against the middle of the pack team. So those are the things that I'm looking for this week, you know. Like I said, I'm nitpicking. I really don't have too much to complain about. You know what? I do have something to complain about. And it's it's going to be something uh, that isn't even really affected this week because it's an away game. You know, I had some, some, some people tell me that we're at the Carolina game against Minnesota, you know, that only a few times did the North Carolina faithful get up and get loud on third downs, fourth downs, you know, um, except goal line situations. That's ridiculous, man. And it breaks my stinking heart because I can honestly say one of the best football games that I've ever been to was when Miami came to Chapel Hill, uh, Sam Howell's second game, when Daz had those thinking, uh, that phenomenal catch in the back of the end zone with Sam on that just ridiculous drive with like two minutes left in the fourth quarter. That place was rocking. That was my son's first football game. He was six, five or six, and that was my fun, my son's first experience in Kenan Memorial Stadium, and I loved it. I mean, that was fun. That place was so lit, man. That place was so lit. Why am I being told that the Tar Heel fans are sitting down on third down and stuff? I hate that, man despise it. I tell you what, when I go to that Duke Carolina game, I can't remember exactly where my seats are off the top of my head, but you better hope you ain't sitting behind me, because your boy's going to be standing up every third down. I don't care if it's third and 52. I don't care if it's third and 52 or third and 52 inches. Your boy is 
going to be standing up and I'm going to be loud, as loud as I possibly can be because that's what the team deserves. I mean, they're putting out, they're 3-0. And when they come to Chapel Hill, when they play Syracuse and Miami again, and, you know, when they got Duke at home and, and uh, even Campbell, they got to be loud, man. Represent the football team and make people know that they're in Kenan Memorial Stadium in Chapel Hill. You know, so that that's one thing that I will rant about. You know what? Unfortunately, I'll probably be ranting about that in 20 years, guys. Um... You know, I don't know. Maybe if the, the Heels start winning 10, 11, 12 football games a year, you know, people will start being a little bit more rowdy. But that would be my one bone to pick right now just off the top of my head, man. It's just, I mean, get loud for the boys, man. Football, get excited. You're not there to watch a matinee. You're there to watch some boys, you know, attempt to, for all intents and purposes, remove their soul from their body obviously legally speaking you know um, so that was that's going to be my one rant if you will but energy ability to motivate yourself and can the hills come out punching you know with a lackluster crowd that's the things that i'm wanting to see this week and those are the things that i'm going to be looking for as the hills go up to pittsburgh and play Phil Jerkovic and Pat Narduzzi and the Pittsburgh Panthers. It's going to be an interesting football game, man. You know, it's not my favorite one to watch every year. I'm not a big fan of playing at Akershire Stadium, one, because it never sells out. Um, you know, and uh, I just don't think it's very good for college football. It's just not a, it's not a very fun matchup. To I don't know. I mean, Pitt, Syracuse, maybe it's because they're newer members of the ACC. I mean, it just, it's not really one that does it for me, but on, you know, in the standings and stuff, it matters. So we got to take it serious and we got to go up there and handle business, man. And that's what I hope the Heels do. Like I said, I got 31-17 because I think the Heels do enough. I think it could possibly be an ugly game. We got to watch out for the weather. The weather could change some things, but, um, you know, those are my things that I'm looking for. Uh, this week as the Hills travel up to Pittsburgh. So do me a favor, man. Put down in the comment section, you know, what do you think about my little rant, I guess, or whatever you want to call that. I don't even know. I was really just thinking rant. What do you think about the fan base? What do you think about the home games? How can we get that thing more jumping, man? How can we encourage people to get up out of their seats and be football fans? You know, put down in the comment section any ideas that you may have. And then also put down in there what you guys are looking for when it comes to this Saturday as the heels travel up the pit, man. Um, you know, and then if you want, man, go ahead and drop down in there your score prediction. Because uh, I'm interested in uh, what everybody thinks about this football game. I think the heels go 4 0. But that's because I think Max got them in a different direction. I think they handle business, man. I think they do generate enough energy. And I think we we just build one more layer on top of that good foundation that we've built for 2023. So, hey, like, share, subscribe. If you haven't already, man, please. Tar Hill fans everywhere, subscribe to the channel. We've had a fantastic last week, man. Um, so people are jumping on the ship. I appreciate you guys so much, man. I love you, fam. This one is truly for North Carolina. Um, so hop on the bandwagon, bro. Let's get on this thing. Let's be together. Let's celebrate this team in unison. And, uh, hey, we got basketball season coming up too, man. So y'all be looking out for that, bro. That's going to be an exciting part of college athletics, UNC sports. Uh, and the Tar Hill Huddle, man. I'm excited about basketball season, too. But right now, baby, it's football season. And we worried about them mighty football hills going up to Pittsburgh. Like, share, subscribe. Love you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm out, Tar Hill Nation.